this video, we're going to look at finding the domain and range using technology. It's sometimes easy to find the domain algebraically. It's not that easy to find the range algebraically. In these cases, it can be helpful to look at a graph. It's also helpful to look at a graph just to check to make sure you know what you're talking about. Let's look at the function f of x equals 1 over x. We know already that the domain should be all real numbers except 0, but we didn't find the range. If we look at a graph in a table of values that includes x equals 0, what we'll find is that at x equals 0 in the table of values, the f of x value is actually undefined. This verifies what we know about the domain, that the domain should be all real numbers except 0. So that's good. We've got a verification of that. Often it's the case that when there's an x value that's disallowed, there's also a y value that's disallowed. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's pretty often. If we look at this graph of f of x equals 1 over x, and we try to zoom in on what's happening on the y values, something fishy is happening around a y value of 0. If we zoom in on that graph, it looks like the y value never equals 0. But as we zoom in closer and closer and closer to the axis, the numbers get bigger and bigger and it's hard to tell. So you might find that it's useful to actually calculate a table of values. For example, at x equals 10, the y value is 0.1. At x equals 1,000, the y value is 0 0.001. At x equals 100,000, the y value is 0 0.00001, or 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. If you think about it, we're just doing 1 over bigger and bigger numbers. And that's not going to be 0. It's just going to be a smaller and a smaller fraction. No matter how big the x value is, the y value isn't going to be 0. It just gets closer and closer without reaching 0. If we go in the other direction on the y-axis, if we look negative, the exact same thing happens. No matter how big the negative x value, the y value, again, just can't be 0. If we plug in negative 10 for x, we get negative 0.1. If we plug in negative 1,000 for x, we get negative 0 0.001. Negative 100,000, we get negative 0 0.00001. It just keeps getting smaller, but it's not going to get to 0. For this reason, we actually can see that the range is all real numbers for y except 0 as well. Why don't you all go ahead and graph the function g of x equals the quantity 10 plus x over the quantity 10 minus x and see if you can figure out both the domain and range by looking at the graph and tables of values. Come back to me when you're finished. All right, we're back. I've got the graph of 10 plus x over 10 minus x. I'm going to zoom out a bit so that I see all the parts of it. Hopefully you figured out that the domain here can include every x value except for 10. And that's because we have a denominator of 10 minus x. So we want to look at where 10 minus x is equal to 0 and then disallow those values. If we simply add an x to both sides of that equation, we'll be left with 10 minus x plus x, which is 10, and 0 plus x, which is x. So 10 equals x is what makes the denominator 0. x cannot be 10. That means our domain is negative infinity to 10 with a parentheses, union 10 to infinity also with a parentheses. Again, left parentheses negative infinity comma 10, right parentheses, union symbol, left parentheses 10 comma infinity, right parentheses. Going back to our graph, we can actually see that the x value never reaches 10. Well, now we know to be suspicious that there might be a y value that can't be now that we know that we have an x value that can't be. Well, what y value would that be? We can immediately see that it's not 0 because, in fact, this graph crosses the x-axis at negative 10, 0. So there is a y value of 0. This is where it might be helpful to pull up a table and see what's happening as we get more and more negative and more and more positive. Since I've written this in function notation, I can just grab a table of values and then start filling in values for the ones I'm interested in. Let's move over in the positive direction first. Since 10 isn't allowed, I'm going to start by changing negative 2 to positive 100. That gives me a value of negative 1.222 repeating. Let me try a value of 1,000. That gives me a value of negative 1.0202 repeating. How about 10,000? Negative 0.1002. I'm getting closer and closer to negative 1. I'll try 100,000. Negative 0.1002. So you can see I'm getting closer and closer and closer to negative 1. Now we look in the other direction now. Let's try negative 100, which gives me negative 0.81 repeating, negative 1,000, which gives me negative 0.98, negative 
10,000, which gives me negative 0.998. So you can see, again, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to negative one. So whether I go in the positive direction or the negative direction, I'm approaching negative one, just above it or below it. And so from this, I'm gonna conclude that the y value that I cannot have is a y value of negative one, which means that my range, in other words, the y values, go from negative infinity to negative one, that's parentheses negative infinity, comma negative one, parentheses, union, parentheses negative one, comma infinity, Infinity, close parentheses everything but negative one again why don't I have you pause this and take a look at finding the domain and range of h of x equals the square root of the whole thing 0.5 x minus 3 come back to me when you've given it a try if we look at the graph of h of x equals the square root of the whole quantity 0.5x minus 3. You can see we have a, a curve that looks like it has an end point around 6 comma 0 and it grows moving to the right but it's not linear it kind of grows at a curve. Now since this is a square root we should be able to find the domain algebraically because we know that there's a piece under the square root that has to be greater than or equal to 0. Let's go ahead and do that. 0.5x minus 3 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. We need to isolate the x, so let's start by adding 3 to both sides. That's 0.5x minus 3 plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 plus 3. Or 0.5x is greater than or equal to 3. Now we can divide on both sides by 0 0.5. 0.05x divided by 0.5 on the left, and 3 divided by 0.5 on the right. On the left, we'll have x, and that's greater than or equal to 3 divided by 0.5, which is 6. In interval notation, we could write that as left bracket, 6 comma infinity. And in fact, when we look at our graph, that is what the domain looks like. It looks like it starts at a value of 6 and it continues on forever on the x-axis. So we're looking good so far. Now the place where we have the lowest x value on this graph should also be the place where we have the lowest y value. So all we really need to do to find that lowest y value is evaluate h of 6. And you'll see that h of 6 comes out to be 0. So we actually have a point here at 6 comma 0. And that is the endpoint in the y direction as well. So our y values will span everything from y equals 0 going on forever moving up. So our range is going to be bracket 0 comma infinity. Remember that's the y values where the domain was the x values. To recap, you can graph functions to verify the domain and range or to gain insight about what the range might be. Make sure to utilize tables of values to help you make sense of what you see on the screen.